Welcome to Hawkeye with me, Dave O'Hara. I've got another good show lined up for you this week, and I know you'll think so after viewing it. It's a clip show, our best of. For all the guests we've had, we've got some fantastic interviews. If you've missed them the first time they aired, we're going to rerun them for you tonight. And also, if you have seen them, enjoy them again. So thanks for tuning in. I know you'll enjoy it. And here we go with Hawkeye with me, Dave O'Hara. His hands were hard and stained with dirt from breaking ground. If a ship ever comes in, it's coming in and rolls, it'll make it go from sun up to sun down. He knows how to make Mother Nature come around with a saddle full of faith in fields full of love. He'll give it hell. Hi, I'm Joel from Tice Automotive Family. We're living through some of the most interesting and challenging times many of us have ever seen. Knowing who you can rely on is more important than ever. Many of us turn to our families to get us through. And the same holds true here. From our fair upfront pricing to exceptional service after the sale, we truly want to exceed your expectations. So give us a call or stop by and let us show you what it means to be part of the Tice Automotive Family. Welcome back to Hawkeye with me, Dave O'Hara. As you can see on the screen, I'm joined by Parker Hesse. Parker Hesse, formerly of Walk-On Iowa, formerly of the Iowa Hawkeyes, currently with the Tennessee Titans. You see all his information at the bottom of the screen. Again, if you miss any part of this show or past episodes, go to at Dave O'Hara Sports via social media or DaveO'HaraSports.com, as you see on the bottom of the screen as well. First and foremost, as always, Parker, great talking to you off the air. Anytime we talk, it's fantastic. Great fun, entertaining, informative. Now I'm bringing it on the air for the first time for the viewers and listeners. Thank you so much for doing this. And secondly, how's everything going with you, my friend? Well, Dave, thanks for having me first off. But yeah, things are going great. Um, just started training about a month ago for this, this upcoming you know, season, going into training camp, uh, looking for another opportunity. But I certainly enjoyed you know, my three, four weeks off there uh, after the season, took it easy, took it slow. Yeah, I've got to, you know, I've got to get to this right away. Ike Budker and I, Tristan Wirfs and I talked about this in the past couple of weeks. The transformation you make going from walk-on high school where you're a quarterback, Marcus Y. Miller's your running back. He goes to Northern Iowa, has a very nice career as a running back there. You obviously go to Iowa. You have a great career there. But as a defensive end, not as a quarterback. Ike Butker has that similar story, being a high school quarterback. I see a smile in there as a high school quarterback and tight end and goes to Iowa. But you switch the sides of the ball. You go to defense, playing defensive end. You redshirt, as most Hawkeyes do coming in uh, your freshman year in 2014. And, man, you come on like gangbusters four years straight being a starter and a leader on that defense. What was your experience like with Chris Doyle? Uh, Kirk Ferentz, the rest of the coaching staff, that transformation you made physically but also mentally from offense to defense going from walk-on Iowa to Iowa Hawkeyes. Yeah, well, first off, you know, fortunately, uh, walk-on's a small enough town that I was able to, you know, play both sides of the ball and, you know, kind of, you know, throughout my high school, I was able to play a lot of different positions. So I kind of had experience all over on the field um, and just, you know, kind of had the ability to learn new things. So I came in my first year, I was actually a linebacker when I redshirted. That's where I was recruited and it went into, you know, about bowl prep my first year. And, you know, Coach Ferentz, you know, called me into his office, asked to make an appointment. And I was freshman. I was super nervous. I was like, geez, what are they kicking me off the team for? I don't even remember doing anything bad. So I went in and he just said, you know, I think, you know, we're, we're hurting at defensive end. We're trying to get some young guys in there. We think you could do it. So, you know, I, I never really doubted him. I, you know, I thought, you know, him and the coaching staff, they've been doing this a long time. So if they believe in me, uh, there's no reason I shouldn't believe in myself. And, you know, obviously it, it took, you know, another year or two for me to gain another 15, 20 pounds of working with Chris Doyle, working with the strength staff, um, just doing a lot of eating. But, uh, you know, I was fortunate to – you know, find myself in a good position and find myself in a place where I felt comfortable and I, uh, you know, kind of uh, grew a little bit. 
Yeah, you know, and I, I need to ask you this, as I did with like Bud Kerr and Tristan Wurst, and obviously I don't want to discount anybody else's experience at Iowa or with uh, Chris, Doyle and the, Chris Doyle and the strength staff. We all know the controversy that went on there. Uh, but what was your experience like with Coach Doyle? I've heard nothing but positive things with Ike Bud Kerr and Tristan Wurst. And for you, as you said, Ike said it's fun eating for the first month or getting to eat whatever you want and putting on weight for the first couple weeks to a month. Did you have that same experience? And then Coach Doyle pushes you pretty hard and the strength staff does, but... Man, you were a leader on the field and in the weight room, but that had to be a nice transition for you once you got used to it, though. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'll start first with the, you know, the eating. Yeah, it's everybody, you know, you talk to says, oh, wouldn't it be nice that, you know, I sit down and I'm like, oh, I don't weigh enough. I got to eat more. But honestly, it gets uncomfortable at times, um, you know, and, and certainly when I'm done with my playing days, I'll be excited to slim down to, you know, a little more natural weight for me. Mm -hmm. But yeah, um, you know, my personal experiences with Coach Doyle, um, you know, he, he certainly respected me as a person. And, you know, I was someone who was who was able to, you know, have a leadership position in the program. And, you know, when I when I look back um, also with just moving to defensive end. That, you know, that that kind of change and, you know, also the strength and conditioning program is what allowed me to do that is kind of, you know, just who I, I got to show who I am and how much I care about the team on a daily basis. You know, the intriguing thing to that, though, when all I've ever heard about you from other reporters, people around the staff, around the, the plate in your era and your time, what a leader you were on and off the field. No clearer example of that from A.J. Epinesa, who everybody was like, why isn't he starting? Why is Epinesa not playing? And, and you got Parker Hesse and An Anthony Nelson. And, and the respect that your fellow teammates have for you and had of you, I'm still blown away by that. Is that a natural thing for you to be a leader like that? As you mentioned, being a leader for Coach Doyle and the strength and conditioning staff and then on the field, in the locker room. Where does that come from for you? Were you a natural leader or did you have to learn your role and get into that? I think, you know, for some people it comes really natural. Um, I, you know, the thing I have going for me in terms of leader is I just like, I like playing football. Like a lot, a lot of playing football and, and winning games, like th those are things that, you know, I find interesting and fun. So, you know, that just kind of lends itself, you know, um, to doing things that your coaches and teammates respect you for. As far as being like outspoken, that's not always, uh, you know, who I've been. And it's still not, you know, something that I'm, I'm, you know, comfortable with. Sometimes it can be challenging to, you know, demand accountability out of, out of your teammates or, or people that you, you know, you'd really just like to kind of laugh and joke and like with, but, you know, as a team and as an organization, you need more out of them and yourself in certain areas. Yeah. You know, and that you, you led by example, obviously. Yeah. The, the, the biggest thing, you know, with, you know, in any organization, you know, people, people, you know, are, can pretty much tell anyone's intentions and it's always fun to, to play with guys who care about the team. Like you, you can tell, any player who, who cares about the guys next to them, cares about the team winning, uh, you know, those guys kind of, you know, tend to be people that you look up to and you enjoy your experience with. Yeah, and, I, and that's all I ever hear through and through throughout that program from whatever era or years that guys played at Iowa. It's, it's awesome to hear, especially in the uh, Kirk Ferentz regime. So we got to ask you this in the last next couple of minutes as we close out this segment, and you said off the air too, whenever it works in your schedule, you'd be happy to join us, and I look forward to catching up with you uh, down the road, but wanted to have you on from being from my home area. You're from Waukon. I'm from the Postville, Castellia area, so obviously high on the list of having you on this program, as with Josie Jewell and others, and we'll have those down the road as well uh, when that works out but what is your experience like now in the NFL so now you're back to the offensive side of the football playing with the Tennessee Titans uh, you were on the practice squad during the last couple seasons and now you're on the roster in the offseason going back in and I know with Corona you know being a part of this and changing things for OTAs coming in April and then your camp and mini camps and such upcoming before the season practices start this summer into the fall season again what's that like for you switching back to the offensive side of the ball where you're a tight end now where number 83 yeah, that was, uh, it was kind of a tough, you know, tough decision. I was coming out, um, you know, we had pro day, the draft came and went, didn't get drafted. And I didn't get signed as an undrafted free agent right after the draft. So I had a rookie mini camp in Kansas city as an outside linebacker. And then I had a rookie mini camp in Detroit. So on my way to Kansas city, uh, the Tennessee's tight ends coach, who is now our offensive coordinator was there. He was watching 
no fan TJ Hawkinson, obviously. Mm -hmm. And he had asked me to jump in some of the tight end drills. So as I was on my way to Kansas city, he called me and the then offensive coordinator, Arthur Smith called me and they said, six of our seven tight ends are hurt right now. We need to sign one out of Ricky minicamp right now. We only have one other person. So I was like, okay, I have a 50, 50 chance of getting signed if I go next week, but it's also a position I've never played before. So I, I talked to coach Ferentz. I called him. Um, I just thought it over and I thought, you know, I played a lot of snaps at Iowa on defense and maybe, you know, if this is going to work out for me, it's at a different position. And so sure enough, I went down there. I got signed out of rookie minicamp, went through OTAs, got a ton of reps because the guys were hurt and ended up sticking on the practice squad, you know, go through another you know crazy year with coronavirus. And I was on the practice squad again, but yeah, so now, after the season, I was signed to a futures deal. I'm on the 90 man roster now and I'm just working towards uh, training camp again, you know, just trying to make a 53 man roster. I love it that you're working out in Iowa City, at least temporarily, and heading back down there. You guys are definitely on the rise in Tennessee with the Titans, with Tannehill as your quarterback and Mike Vrabel as your coach. You guys are in the playoffs the last couple of years, one of the best teams uh, in the AFC. So it's going to be fun to watch you guys see how this future progresses, you being on a futures deal, but also seeing how the future for the Tennessee Titans rolls out for you and for them. Fun stuff, Parker. Thank you so much. Best of luck, continued success, and we look forward to catching up with you very soon whenever it works in your schedule, if that works for you. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for having me, Dave. My pleasure. He is Parker Hesse, as you see his information at the bottom of the screen. Thanks again to him. And we'll be back with more to close out the show with Kent McCausland, former Hawkeye basketball playing great. Back with more Hawkeye with me, Dave O'Hara, in just a few moments. When you're a farmer, there's a lot of things you can't control. But there is a way to give your soybeans an early advantage. Mershman Seed Soybean Seed Treatment featuring Trapidity ST. An independent analysis has proven faster and more even emergence every time. Just look at the Mershman difference. Give your crop the boost it needs for a uniform stand. For the best yields, grow with us. Mershman Seeds. Hi, I'm Joel from Tice Chevrolet. We've lived through some very interesting times the last few months. Ensuring everyone's safety is more important than ever. That is why we are participating in the Chevy Clean program. At your request, we will pick up your vehicle, service it, and return it after we've cleaned it using the current CDC guidelines. This is just another way to work towards exceeding your expectations. So give us a call and let us show you what it means to be part of the Tice Automotive family. There is a spot for women in agriculture. There's many places for females, um, for female farmers. We can do a lot. Um, uh, over the years, maybe we couldn't have always done everything, but there's lots of places we're finding on our dairy farm especially that females are really good at milking cows. They're really good caretakers. They're good at taking care of animals and observant and detail-oriented, which fits in well on a farm and can make an operation more successful. Welcome back to Hawkeye with me, Dave O'Hara. As you can see on the screen, Kent McCausland joining me. Kent's information at the bottom of the screen along with mine. If you miss any part of this show or past episodes, at Dave O'Hara Sports via social media or DaveOHaraSports.com. Kent is still the all-time leader in three-point shooting percentage at the University of Iowa in Hawkeye basketball history for the single season and also for a career. Single season, 52%. For the career, 45%. Uh, Kent is still part of the last team, last Hawkeye team, that made it to the Sweet 16 in 1999. Kent's dad also played at the University of Iowa. Kent does a TV show with his dad, Mac McCausland, and our mutual friend, Rob Brooks. So go to Kent's personal Twitter handle, as you see at the bottom of the screen, at Kent McCausland for all that information. First and foremost, Kent, thanks for joining us. It's been great catching up with you off the air. Glad to bring it on the air. How you doing, my friend? And thanks for joining us. I'm doing great. Hey, thanks for having me. Uh, it, it makes me feel old when you, you, you shout out some of those some of those stats and some of those things, uh, it's hard to believe that an Iowa team has not been back to the Sweet 16 since 1999, but that is the fact. Uh, not that there haven't been some great teams uh, along the way, it just hasn't uh, occurred for the Hawks. Hopefully this year will be a little different. Yeah, that, that, that is unbelievable. Hey, we're going to have a Michael Jordan story, viewers, so stay tuned for that because uh, Kent has a lot of history uh, in and around basketball, still does today with his sons coaching and watching them play. So we're going to catch up with what Kent's up to uh, off the court as well. So Kent, let's get to it right away with the Hawkeyes. You know, last week, 
an interesting week where they get uh, beaten pretty handily by Michigan, understandably so. Uh, now Michigan, the number two team in the country, the Hawks catapulting to number five after losing that game starting the week at number nine. <laughs> and then they beat Ohio State pretty handily at Columbus. And you know what it's like to play there at both places and at Michigan and at Ohio State. But that, that win against Ohio State carried a lot of weight, didn't it? That's a great win on the road. Uh, and like you said, as you head into that week, wow, what a brutal schedule you're, you're playing at Michigan and at Ohio State. And you really thought, hey, let's let's split them. If you if if you get both, that's unbelievable. You're you're really playing well. Uh, but if you can get a split, I thought that was a win for the Hawkeyes and they were able to do so. Uh, Michigan is a different animal than Ohio State. You look at Michigan, Michigan is going to compete uh, to get to the final four and maybe win a championship. Obviously, we want the Hawkeyes to do the same thing. But the difference between those two teams is the big kid Hutchinson inside that was able to give Garza enough problems. Uh, and if you can give Garza problems, then you make the other Hawkeyes um, have to make shots and make plays. And when he can draw a double, he can make things easier for his teammates. And you saw that at Ohio State. They were getting up and down. Uh, Joe Toussaint has a fantastic game. The bench comes in and plays well. Uh, Frederick's hitting shots. Wieskamp's being aggressive. Everything was working, and a uh, great win by the Hawks on the road at Ohio State. Okay, I'm going to have you put your prognosticator hat on then now, Kent, after we reviewed those games. Now we go into this week, and by the time we record this on Tuesday afternoon, so by the time the viewers see this on Friday night, the Hawks will have already played Nebraska at Carver Hawkeye Arena, and then they're getting ready to close out the season on Sunday on national TV against Wisconsin. After beating Wisconsin in Madison earlier, now they play Wisconsin at home to close out the regular season. That double bye, as you know again, Kent, in the uh, Big Ten tournament is going to be very important important instead of the single buy as also seeding for the national March Madness tournament upcoming. So I got to ask you this, Nebraska, what's going on? They beat Rutgers very handily last night. Again, we record this on Tuesday afternoon. Let's not forget we have the Illinois Michigan game tonight. So there is a lot of flux that can still happen in the Big 10 standings. So on any given day, right? It is the Big 10, right? And and I think you could look at the even at the Ohio State game and if you're an Ohio State fan, against Iowa, you just kind of laid an egg. You just did not play well. And you have those throughout the season in the Big Ten where you just don't play well. It's whether or not you can grind out a win or not in those situations. Uh, the Wisconsin game, I would not uh, take that as a gift, right? You, you got to take care of business at home. Wisconsin did not shoot well in Wisconsin against Iowa. Now, the defense sure is improving for the Hawks, and that man-to-man looks fantastic against Ohio State. But Wisconsin's going to come in thinking we can get a big win against a ranked opponent, a top five, top ten opponent in Carver Hawkeye, and then we can improve our resume and we can bump up the standings. You got to be ready to play because Wisconsin is going to come in uh, and they don't have any pressure. They just need to come out and play. And you know they're going to be physical. You know they're going to play defense. If they shoot better, they're going to be right there in that game with the, with the Hawkeyes. So Iowa's got to be ready to go and uh, be very intense, just like they were at Ohio State. Well stated, Kent. And I got to, you know, transition from here, you know, into the rest of the tournament. We'll talk as the season goes along, but I've got to do a little catching up with you here and let the listeners and viewers know what you're up to these days. I know it's at the bottom of the screen uh, at the beginning of the segment, at the ending, ending of this segment, it'll say, you know, you're a partner with PDCM um, Insurance. And I want you to uh, kind of update the, the listeners and the viewers what you're up to today. And then we got to transition to the Michael Jordan story from years ago, please. Yeah, you bet. So uh, moved back to the state, moved back to Waterloo about 11 years ago um, from Kansas City, which I'm sure you're you're OK with. I'm a huge Chiefs fan now. So uh, luckily, uh, I have been that way since high school. But um, I get to reap the benefits of uh, having Patrick Mahomes on my team, I guess now. But uh, moved back to uh, to Waterloo, Iowa and now a partner at PD's DM Insurance and do a lot of uh, property casualty, medical malpractice coverage uh construction manufacturing so more in that business uh world um and enjoy it we've got a great group of uh, employees and, and co-owners and got to work with my dad for several years so that was uh enjoyable and horrible all at the same time as some of you could imagine um but uh he's been terrific and a great mentor for me both in life and in business uh yeah. there at pdcm 
Yeah, as, as you mentioned, I love the Kansas City area, still have a place there, and, and uh, worked at Fox Sports Radio there for many years. So w like West Des Moines, it's a very, very big insurance company town, and now you're back in your native Waterloo when you went to West Waterloo High School, then of course University of Iowa Hawkeyes. So Kent, we've waited long enough. I got to hear the Michael Jordan story. I'm going to let you set it up. I'm going to step out of the way. I'm not even going to try to frame this story. <laughs> I'm going to let you take over from here and update us on that, please. I'll do the best I can. It is a fantastic story. Um, so I think there's a summer in between my sophomore and junior year, uh, J.R. Koch and I were looking for opportunities to get better in the summertime. We always stayed in Iowa City and played in the primetime league and we go uh, work camp at Iowa or whatever. Uh, Rich Walker says, you know, I think I can get you into this Michael Jordan basketball camp if you want to go into Chicago and, and, uh, and play and be a, a camp counselor. And we said, okay, we'll go. And so we go, we find out that, uh, you know, Michael comes to the camp. It's at Elmhurst College, uh, outskirts of Chicago. And, and so he comes every day. He'd show up in a new, different Porsche, a different uh, Ferrari, what have you, uh, yeah. license plates, MJ23, or and come in. And you'd swear, uh, you know, God had walked in the, in the building. There's just electricity when the man walks in the room. Uh, so we get to see him every day for about an hour. And he'd talk to the kids and, and everything. But at night, as counselors, we would all play against each other. So it's about 30 Division I college kids there um, working as count, uh, camp counselors. And so we'd play at night. And one of the nights, Wednesday night, uh, it, it gets around the camp that, that Michael's going to come that night and play with the counselors and show off for the kids, right? So big deal. Uh, we show up. Um, Michael's not there yet. So the camp director comes out and he says, all right, I need five skins and five shirts to kind of get this thing rolling and the kids can watch you guys play for a little while. And as he's about to jump it up, you know, in Michael Jordan fashion, he makes an entrance and you, you hear this murmur coming from behind the stands there in a small gym in Elmhurst College. And the place just starts erupting. And here comes Michael. He's rolling out. The flash bulbs are going. This is back when you had cameras you'd go buy at the store. And um, he comes out and he says, one of you shirts have to go. And we look at each other, JR and I say, we're not going anywhere. And this kid just volunteers and he walks away. So Michael's on, on my team with JR, uh, another guard from Bradley, and then a power forward, I think. Um, well, the guard was from Utah and a power forward from Bradley. So we've got our five. As you can imagine, we win the first game, okay? We're going up and down, and and, uh, and Michael is, is doing his thing, which – Again, uh, playing at a completely different level than anyone on the floor. And he's probably not even playing at 30% capacity. I mean, he's just out there entertaining. Um, and, and we go up and down and, and we win. And true to the last dance, if, if uh, all of your viewers watch the last dance, you know, he wants to win every time at everything, no matter what. And so we get the win and the, the director comes back out and he says, okay, I need four new shirts to play with Michael and five new skins to play against him. And Michael looks at him and says, nope, we won. We're staying here. We're running all night. And so four guys got to play with Michael Jordan that night, and I was one of them, and J.R. Koch was one of them. And we had some good exchanges back and forth, and he hit me with a pass. You know, you, you hit a jumper, and you point back to Michael, and he points back at you. And uh, you, you, you really feel like you are in you're in heaven, right? I mean – Jordan is kicking the ball out to you and you're making shots for him. Like, I'm just like, I'm John Pax. How good is this? Right. So, uh, terrific experience. Ken, thanks so much. We'll catch up with you soon. Thank you, sir. Have a good one. You too now. Thank you. Thanks again for tuning in to our clip show with Hawkeye with me, Dave O'Hara. The best of the best. Man, we've got some great interviews and some great folks joining us. Uh, so I'm glad you got to see that for the first time or watch it again for a second or third time. Love to have you viewing the show. And thanks again to our advertisers and sponsors who make this show possible. And thanks to you for tuning in. So for Hawkeye with me, Dave O'Hara, that's all from me. Thanks to all of you.